and before I was so rudely interrupted, um, this part of the shell here was actually kind of caved in. Okay, you can actually the soft tissue here at that angle um, where it was actually moved down. So we had to use these longer screws to put on there to actually bring the the the, the body wall out to the layer of the metal. Anyway, so I don't like using such long screws. The good news is the, the body of the tortoise's body is going to wall these off and they'll just be small, tiny little holes in the in the seal loam that once you remove these screws will actually heal up fine, um, provided there's no secondary infections. But we did our best to create the outer wall here, okay? And that's what that one looks like. And we had to use pretty much the same technique on both of them. You can actually see how the outside screws here to the top and the bottom are shorter and the ones in the center um, or a little bit longer. Um, it's just part of the technique of pulling the body wall to them. And it's, this is actually quite soft for a tortoise's body. Um, so that's uh, why we use such long screws. And as much as I don't like doing it um, because it's a little invasive in this area here, the body will wall it off and it should be fine. The good news is we had, we fixed a hole in the rent in this lung so this guy can actually breathe through his nose again. And I'm sure that's quite a relief for this guy. All right. I'll uh, go to the next one. All right, see if I make this work. I'm in the dark room. Um, I'm still in call dark rooms, even though this is a uh, um, digital photograph. Uh, back in the days when we used film. Anyway, what I want you to notice here is if I can, here we are. All right. <coughs> this one ended up taking three plates. This is actually some very, very soft pieces of bone. When the dog had bitten it across this angle here, okay, there was a hole right there actually was part of the canine and the rest of the teeth arcade went across here and also on the bottom it crushed it so we had to use these longer screws okay um to actually pull that bone matrix um to the surface and make that shell round again and you can see let me go to the bottom At a later date, we'll probably end up going in over here in the prefemoral area with an endoscope and bringing the uterus to the wall. And then once there, we'll actually take these eggs out of that hole one by one. But that's going to require a whole different hospital with a different setup as far as surgery goes. Um, here at Bayview, we do not have that. I have all the scopes and my main screen that I usually keep, have been using for the last 20 years is at Socha. So we'll probably end up scheduling this at a later time, sometime in the near future at Socha. Um, so that's where we're at for now. Anyway, those eggs inside there are just scaring the hell out of me. The good news is she's waking up from anesthesia. We've gotten it back in. The purse string is holding. And she has some healing to do before we decide the next step. How's that for cool? In a very sad, complicated tortoise kind of way. All right. Wish her luck. Okay, this is our uh, troublesome tortoise case today. Um, all right, this is the left side of the tortoise here. What I want you to notice is there really are no eggs predominantly on this side, but there are eggs predominantly on this side. Uh, as I'm palpating the tortoise from the back end back here in the cloaca, you can actually feel that the uterine horn is going off in this direction um, or the salpinks, and that's enough for me to put two and two together and say that the left uterine horn was the one that was prolapsed. We were able to poop past the prolapse as well as um, urinate past the prolapse. What I want you to notice is on this side, there's an egg there, egg there. You can see some small calcifications. Oh, there you go. Now you can see them really good. Um, those are still meant to come out, okay? Uh, I did my best not to damage the uterus to put it back in, not knowing where if, if I was in the bifurcation or what I've actually removed. But what we did is I had to I had to suture it up to save her life as quickly as I could. So at a later date, we'll probably end up going in. There are things I can see in a week, a week's time that a client might not see. Okay, and it would have been nice to have noticed these areas having problems way back in December, where we could have fixed these a lot easier. Okay, I'm tired of whining. Let me get work on this dog. That don't um, that don't bend and they don't break. 
Unfortunately, there's still that little bit of micro movement that happens. So in this case, over time, these guys move so much it made the bone and the bone move away from the pin. And then over time, this leg was able to move so much that it was actually going to form another joint here. And somewhere it decided to leg wanted to heal, which is why we got the calcification that I showed um, that I showed earlier. Um, on this side here, same thing. You can actually see where it's starting to heal. That's just heartbreaking. This dog went through a lot of pain to get this far. And then somewhere on the line, client run compliance, this way that's the term we use when you don't show up for your rechecks or you don't listen to what we tell you. And we, uh, we make sure that everybody signs a sheet of paper telling them exactly what there is, what's expected of them after a surgery. Most of that is cage resting, keeping it on, uh, keeping them uh, off the floor and, and out of harm's way. And also at the same time to come in for weekly rechecks. There are things I can see that it was because um, the first thirty had done something wrong, but I happen to know this uh, this person quite personally, and I can tell you that only she did anything wrong. And <laughs> seeing as how we've not seen this guy since November, or this this cute little girl, chances are this is a client non-compliance case. So somehow or other, this dog just tends to move way too much, jumping off of furniture, family's not keeping it still. Um, something happens. But anyway, when these two bones were matched and sitting together when this dog left, and the two weeks after that, or a week after that, we actually saw some callus on that bone. It was actually starting to heal. And according to the history, the client can narrow it down to the exact week that it rebroke, and this happened to it. Anyway, so there's that. We'll go to the next view. <laughs> All right. Just looking at this depresses the hell out of me. Uh, looking over here, you can actually see where there is some bridging there, and there's actually a large hole in the bone where it just did not heal for some strange reason. There's a lot of pin rejection, and so this actually is not holding the leg together as well as it should. Um, every time this mo the leg moves, there's a tiny bit of movement of these pins going in and out of the leg, and those have got screwed ends. Okay, those are actually screws that go into the bone. Down here on this one, um, you can actually see where the side of the bone is almost where it needs to be, but look at that, that area right there. There's no bone holding that together. That's a complete non-union. And according to the other x-ray, it's off to the side. Anyway, um, all right, we're going to go in, remove these, remove those, give the bones a chance to do some healing, and then we may have to go back in and re-surgery, re re-surgerize. <coughs> <laughs> re 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 surgerize later. Here's an extra leg two weeks after uh, or two weeks post op. What I want you to notice is you can actually see right there the uh, the periosteal reaction between these two bones it's actually starting to bridge there. And on this one, look how smooth that is. That's coming together. That's actually starting to heal. <coughs> now external fixatures are set or how to put this the theory is if we put these pins in this leg above and below the fracture and we put it together on the outside okay with a pin or a bar that replaces this bone statistically the bad news is whenever there's weight put on this leg there's tiny tiny micro movements that happen I mean really 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 tiny micro movements when those micro movements happen then these pieces of bone don't move too well, and this is just a bar, okay? And if you've ever piece, played with a piece of bar, regardless of what it is, it does have uh, you know some bending, um, bending abilities to it. We try to choose the pins. Okay, these are the VD rads of our dog we were just looking at. Uh, what you notice right here, you can see the round um, open into that bone, and round open into that bone, um, quite separated. Over here, you can actually see some calcification going on, but there's still that little dark line of questionable, questionable area. Today's mission is to go ahead, since there's not a whole lot of bone here to work with, remove these, put this dog into a splint for a week or two weeks, and then at that point in time, we'll wait and see if this actually, uh, because of any movement, heals a little bit better. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll take that one step at a time. We'll re-x-ray next week and then a week after and possibly get this guy ready for some more surgery in this leg. This leg has a rather precarious history. It was actually broken once before and fixed by another veterinarian. Um, when it was fixed by the veterinarian, this part of the bone here, instead of being at this angle, was stuck down at this angle. And down here, this angle, it was actually, how do I put this? You can't see on the pin. Anyway, it was bent at a 90 degree angle and that's how it healed. Um, at first I thought...
right from right there um, looking at this x-ray you can actually a small round spot there as well as this spot here and this might be the spleen and this might be the spleen but I still don't know what this is other than that the rest of the abdomen looks fine um, there is some signs of spondylosis in here um, <clears throat> knowing how this dog has had a, uh, a liver cancer once before that we removed luckily it was pedunculated and easy to remove then uh, I'd like to uh, recommend another exploratory and let's see if we can uh, make that miracle happen one more time. Um, other than that, this dog's actually eaten some bones or something in the rear near past because that is chock full of tiny pieces of the bone and stuff in there. Um, let me see if I can put this down and switch to the next frame. Going down, ta-da, to there. Hey, I did it. Our uh, kidney shots look good, good on both sides. Again, you can see that one spot right there. Um, there's your stomach. Uh, here's more of the bone stuff that's in there. Um, anyway, so there's something in the liver parenchyma right there that probably needs to be removed. And what I find odd is it's a higher density on the outside than it is on the inside. Looking back at the old uh, the video when we removed this before, the inside of the last tumor was basically blood filled. I don't remember if we sent it off or not, but um, we'll get that answer as well. All right, so now if I can go to the next one. Cheat, click. <clears throat> Here's our x-rays of our chest. Um, no problems or metzing in the chest here, but again, another shot that shows that there's something almost perfectly round here with some tissue before and behind it. Um, and tons and tons of some gas. That little black spot right there is a future fart. Because um, <laughs> I can say that on film, I just love it. Anyway, so uh, we need to, to schedule an exploratory and find out what this is and if we can remove it. So there it is, Mom. I wanted you to see it. Mm -hmm.